Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Statue of Death. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12 ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money goes twice as far. Pepsi is America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi is best? And now, to Counter Spy. Over the hills of Tennessee, the late afternoon sun was low on the horizon. A young chemist stood on the grounds of the world's largest atomic plant, its grounds protected by high fences, its gates guarded by the latest scientific devices. As the young man walked along the grounds inside the main gate, he bent over and picked up a little gray cat. Hello, Kitty. How's Mildred? Mouse catching business pretty good, eh, Mildred? Hey, Pop! Huh? Look out for that dog outside the gate. Oh, Mildred, here he comes. Easy, Mildred. Now, don't jump down. That collar will take your head off. I lost you. Now you're in for a fight. Here, boy. Leave that cat alone. Come here. Come here, boy. Come here. Now, let's see a cop. Let's see a cop. What's your name, huh? Oh, Tommy, huh? Beautiful collar you are, Tommy. Yes, sir. Fine head, good long thick coat. Ah, your master's whistling for you, Tommy. That man outside the gate, he's going to scold you for running in here. Go to him, Tommy. Go to him, boy. Tommy, some more emery paper. Yeah. Mr. Morton, you're waking on that little statue of St. Cecilia like you was Michael Owen and Angelo. <laughs> I certainly didn't hire you because you had brains, Tubby. It's Michelangelo. Here's your emery paper. How does the statue look? It's okay if you like antiques. You'd never guess there's a vial of uranium compound worth half a million dollars hidden in the neck, would you? Half a million dollars? I'd like to kiss it. Kissing it's all right. But keep this stuff close to you long enough, and you'll become radioactive and die. Don't you ever touch this statuette without a pair of these special gloves. I won't even kiss it. But, Mr. Morton, them foreign guys you're in touch with, will they pay off in their own dough or good old United States greenbacks? Stubby, you and I have lived in this dinky town 50 miles from the atomic plant For two years, planning and working. Finally, success. We're going to be paid plenty in United States greenbacks. (laughs) That was a slick stunt, all right. Getting this uranium compound out of the gate and stuck in the dog's long hair with adhesive tape. (laughs) The dog was so low and ran so fast, even the Geiger counter at the gate didn't register. Boy, I done good when I hooked up with you, Mr. Morton. You got more brains than all them bank heisters and counterfeiters I ever worked with. <clears throat> but now we got this stuff, Mr. Morton. How do we get the statue out of the country? You'll never guess, Stubby. Or will anybody else? Yeah. Have to be some way like nobody ever thought of, huh? Remember every Sunday the past two months? I drove over to that mountain resort a hundred miles west? So? At the big hotel, 
There's a certain guest I've been studying. A wealthy Mexican gentleman named Juan Sotillo. About 47, good character, and uh, very religious. Mm -hmm. He's visiting over at the resort, but his home is in Acapulco, Mexico. It's a famous beach resort. Beach resort, huh? And an ideal place for us to catch a ship. Europe. Say, maybe we could stay a while then. Stay a while. Our theft of the uranium compound will be discovered any minute. We've got to get it to Acapulco fast. And that's where the Mexican gentleman, Senor Sotillo, is going to help us. I don't get you. Well, we're going over to visit him, Stubby. Get the car. I'll tell you more. Only about ten miles more to the hotel where Senor Sotillo is staying, Stubby. And what do we do then, Mr. Morton? Every evening, about dusk, he walks along the shore of a little lake in back of the hotel. There are rowboats on the lake. I'm going to be rowing in one of them. Oh, look, I hate rowing. You won't I'm... be with me, Stubby. I want something to happen so this statue of St. Cecilia will mean a great deal to him so that he won't part with it under any conditions. Look, Mr. Morton, you hired me to help you. I've been with you two years, most of the time with my mouth hanging open. And what you do, uh, why don't you explain to me about the boat and stuff? We'll see this evening, Stubby. No matter what happens, don't come to me in the boat. That's what I want Senor Sotillo to do. Walking on the lake shore, right on schedule. Now's the time. Senor? Uh, Mr. Sotillo, I'm the man you saved from drowning last evening. Oh, yes. Senor Martin, come in, please. Yeah. Senor Sotillo, I brought you a gift of appreciation. Uh, let me show it to you. Senor, it's beautiful. A statue of St. Cecilia. It belonged to my mother before she died. Please take it. No, no, Senor Morton. I, I could not accept such a beautiful gift. But you saved my life. I want you to have it. I insist. Well, I will cherish it, Senor. I realize how dear it must be to you. Senor Sotillo, uh, are you staying in the States? Uh, no, I am starting for my home in Acapulco, Mexico, tomorrow. I am driving down. I'll be happy to know, sir, that my statue of St. Cecilia... We'll be going with you. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Why you stay con Dios? In English, one would say, may God be with you. Elena! Juan! Juan Sotillo! Oh, Juan, I've been waiting here at the mission all afternoon. It is a long drive here from Tennessee, Elena. And I have 500 miles more to drive to my home. Juan, I... I hoped perhaps this time you... you would stay. Elena, I promised you that while I was in the States, I would think about us and come to a decision. I love you very much, Juan. I love you very much, too, Elena. But listen, and try to understand. You know I'll do whatever you say. Your father is a fine man, a proud man. And you are all he has left. I, too, in my way, am a proud man. And... And I know he does not want you to marry me. But we will tell him my life does not belong to him anymore. It belongs to you. Elena, 
I am much older than you. Your father wants you to be the wife of a younger man. And because I am older than you, I know something you do not. If you defy your father, he will die of bitterness and shame. And you could never forgive yourself or me. Juan, you are a fine man. There is no other man like you. Elena, I have something in the car here. Something I want you to have. The statue of St. Cecilia. Given to me by a man whose life I saved. It was very dear to him. What better could I do than give it to the one I love? As our parting present. Juan, I will keep it at the head of my bed always. I will never part with it. I shall pray every morning and night that, that she will watch over you and, and protect you. Goodbye, Elena. Goodbye, Juan. Goodbye, Juan. I love you forever. Sotillo. Huh? What are you doing here in my patio? Don't you recognize me, Mr. Sotillo? Senor Morton. The man whose life I saved in Tennessee. And uh, this is Stubby. A man who uh, works for me. Hi. How do you do? Mr. Sotillo. That statue out of St. Cecilia I gave you in the States. I need it back. Uh, I I do not have it. Where is it? I, I, I'm sorry, but I cannot tell you. Why can't you tell us? I... I cannot say that either. Maybe this gun will make you think a little differently. Mr. Sotillo, if you don't want to be shot right this minute, walk out front to our car. <laughs> Sotillo, can you hear me? Again, I ask you, where's that statuette? I, I will not tell you. Okay, Stubby, some more. Yeah. Uh, you know, Morton, this guy can't take it no more. Hold it, Stubby. Senor Sotillo, listen to me. The reason you won't say where that statue of St. Cecilia is is it because you might hurt somebody if you did? Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Who is that person? I would never tell. Not if you beat me for a hundred years. Does that person have the statuette? Yes. Listen, Satio. I gave you that statuette so you'd bring it down here to Acapulco. I knew with your reputation no one would suspect you. But hidden in that statue... There's half a million dollars worth of a certain uranium compound. What? The statue is not lead. If anyone has it who doesn't know how to handle it, that person will become radioactive and die. Senor, you try to frighten me with lies. You have read of the effects of the atom bomb, the radioactivity which has caused deaths. I will go and get the statuette. Tell me where it is and we'll get no, it. No, no, no. And you must promise not to follow me. All right, I promise. On your word of honor? Yes, on my word of honor. I must drive 500 miles. I will start now. 500 miles? Help me to my feet. I will be back in three days. On my honor. You better hurry. Yes. I must hurry. I must. Back to Counter Spy in a moment. But first. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. 
Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question. Why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola so delicious and each bottle makes two drinks. It is certainly the cola for the purchaser who thinks everybody's drinking Pepsi. Just compare it with the rest. So much more and so much finer. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. In the dim main room of a luxurious Mexican hacienda, two men tensely face each other. Senor Sortillo... I must ask you to leave my house at once. Senor Fuentes, I beg of you to let me see your daughter. I will not. You are right to be angry. But believe me, I would not come without a good reason. You are a man of honor, senor. You told Elena you would never see her again. I am her father. I forbid you to see her now. Senor, with all respect, I must see Elena. And I shall before I leave this house. Her life depends on it. Her life, do you say? You must have great reason indeed to come here now. To use such words to... I am sorry. You could not have known. Known? I must remember. Even now that you loved her deeply. That is the door to her room. Her room? Is she ill? The doctors do not understand it. But they say there is no hope for her. No hope? She is... She is dying, Senor Sotillo. That is her room. You may go in. Yes, Elena. I am real. Let me touch you. I am sorry, Elena. So bitterly, terribly sorry. Juan, on the table here, your statue of St. Cecilia. It has been near me all the time. I... I don't know what to say. I, I am so happy you have come. Elena... I'm going to take the statuette away. Oh, no. I, I must. Very well, if, if you must, but for a moment, hold it where I can see it. And you. Oh, I'll be waiting for you, Juan. Sometime. Somewhere. I promise. On my word of honor. I must leave now. Goodbye, Juan. But I'll be waiting. The tail, huh? The tail, wait. What? Oh, Senor Morton. You have the statuette? Give it to me. You promised you would not follow me. With a half a million dollars at stake? Stubby, let him have it so he can't talk. Yes, this is Helen 
Ferguson, Mr. Harding's secretary. No, Mr. Harding's not here. He flew out this morning. He's already at the atomic plant in Tennessee. And naturally, Mr. Harding, the theft of uranium compound from this atomic plant is a matter for the counter spies. Well, Dr. Corning, what section of the plant do you believe it was stolen from? Right from this laboratory section, Mr. Harding. It's highly radioactive, isn't it? Unless precautions are taken, it can be fatal. Pardon me, Mr. Harding. Sure. Yes? What? Yes. Y- yes, yes, of course. Well, that's awful. Awful. Yes, I'll, I'll tell Mr. Harding at once. What is it, Doctor? One of our young chemists, Selwood Parks, has just shot himself over at his house. Oh? And he left a suicide note addressed to you. Let's get over there as fast as we can, Doctor. I want to read that note. I am killing myself because I committed treason, blackmailed by a man whose identity I never learned, but I followed his orders. I stole the uranium from the laboratory. Out in the yard, I picked up the yard cat. The man was on the outside of the gate with a collie shepherd dog. He let the dog run in through the gate, and there was a fight. Of all the fiendishly clever schemes. I petted the dog, but as I did so, I hid the vial under the collie's stomach with adhesive tape. The dog's owner whistled. The dog ran out of the gate. It looked so natural. The guards paid no attention. What a trick to... Now, I cannot live on as a traitor. My wife, my children, forgive me. What an end for a young fellow. If he could have given us just one clue to the identity of the man. Maybe he did, Peters, without realizing it. In this part of the country, people prefer hounds. Not many have collie shepherd dogs. I want you to locate every collie shepherd dog within a hundred miles of this plant. Outside the town, Peters, you can drop the siren. Now, go ahead and tell me. Well, we've located 119 collie shepherd dogs within 100 miles of the atomic plant. And the owners all stood inspection? The only odd situation is this family we're going to visit. Six weeks ago, a man named Morton said he was going to Mexico and gave them his dog. Well, that's worth investigating. I'm glad you brought along the Geiger counter, too. With so much uranium compound taped to the body of the dog, even though it was only on him for a few minutes, it may have made him radioactive. Yeah, there are some trucks ahead, Peter. Sound your siren. Time counts. Easy. Easy, boy. This isn't going to hurt. All set with the counter, Dave. Move the dog over this way, Father Peter. Go with you, boy. Come on. Now, let's try the Geiger counter. That's normal. Swing the dog over a little farther. Come on, boy. There you go. Good boy. He sure is radioactive. This is the dog without any question, Peters. Look at that needle. This dog will never live. Sorry, old boy. Look at his eyes. I think he knows it, too. Peters, you say the woman who has this dog now says that the man who gave it to her mentioned flying to Mexico. Yes. I'll check any plane reservations made recently from around here to Mexico. And contact the Mexican police. The thieves are going to want to get that uranium to some foreign country just as soon as they can. Morton, I'm sure glad to see that boat. Yes, Tubby. I'll be glad to get out of Acapulco, too. Not too happy about our disguises, though. Why, it's the best we could do. You got the tickets. Nice ones, Tubby, for Europe. Yeah, and a half a million bucks payoff, eh? Hey. Yeah? We ain't going to Europe in that little tub. That's only the lighter to take passengers out to the ship. Oh. She's anchored way out. Don't let that suitcase get out of your hands now, Never. Huh? Get in line. We have to show our tickets. Yeah. You, 
you know I got to laugh. What's funny? Right in our hands, enough uranium compound. Shut up. To... Don't you yell it out, you have well, here, here, Here's the guy taking tickets. Tickets, please. Please show your tickets. There you are. You two gentlemen? Yes, yeah, two gentlemen. Want a porter for that bag, sir? I'll carry it. Very well. Just a moment. Uh, we're delaying the line. Let's keep going, sir. Stand where you are. Yes. What? Uh, a gun? And another one. Right behind you, boy. Right. Walk through that door. What is this? United States counter spies. Peters, I've got them covered. See if they have guns. All right. We're one each, Mr. Harding. Mr. Harding, I protest this treatment. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. Peters, put the suitcase on the table. All right. Bring the Geiger counter closer. Yeah. Now, let's see. Papers. Books. Shirts, ties. Toilet articles. Morton, what's this wrapped in flannel? Just a statuette. Hear that? The Geiger counter tells us that whatever's in this flannel is radioactive. Open up, Peters. Let's see. But I... Well... Statuette of St. Cecilia. Morton, is this where you hid the uranium compound you stole from the atomic plant? I don't know what you're talking about. You blackmailed a man in the, you helping you get it out with your own collie dog. You're out of your mind. I never owned a dog in my life. Just a moment. I have another way to make a test. Come on out, Tommy. Come on, boy. He's jumping all over it. That doesn't mean anything. The dog hasn't forgotten you, has he? Of all the people here, he picked you right out. You killed him. Now he's putting the finger on you. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment... Remember, Pepsi-Cola, hit the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more, lots more value, lots more zest. I take less when Pepsi's best. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the desert explosion. The man-eating birds of prey that were used to execute a betrayer, the worldwide smuggler who used geometry in action to test salesman of information, and the three pennies worth of sulfur that were used to trick the killer the law couldn't touch. Be sure to be listening on Thursday, day after tomorrow, to Case of the Desert Explosion on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight. Music